Saturday Night Theatre. Keith Michel plays Captain Dancy and John Justin de Levis in John Galsworthy's play Loyalties, originally written in 1922. Loyalties. That alarm? Yes, Charles? Not in bed yet, are you? What is it, Charles? Oh, nothing really. I just wondered whether you won at bridge. No fear. Who did? Lord St. Earth and Ferdy de Levis. To leave us has too much luck. The bounder won two races today, and he's as rich as Chris. Charlie, he looks exactly as if he'd sold me a carpet when I was paying him. Oh, his father did sell carpets wholesale in the city. Really? Mm. And you say I haven't intuition? Uh, Ronnie Dancy took a tenner off him anyway before dinner. No, how? Standing jump onto a bookcase four feet high. <laughs> the Levis had to pay up and sneered at him for making money by parlour tricks. That Jew gets himself disliked. Aren't you rather prejudiced? Not a bit. I like Jews, but he pushes himself. He's keen to get into the jockey club. Oh, yes. It's amusing to see him trying to get round old St. Earth and the General. If Lord St. Earth and General Canning backed him, he'd get in if he did sell carpets. <laughs> Your slippers are under that chair, if that's uh, what you're looking for, dear. Yes. Ronnie Dunce is hard up again, I'm afraid. Mm. He had a bad day at the races. When a chap takes to doing parlour stunts for a bet, it's a sure sign. What made him chuck the army? He says it's too dull now. There's no fighting. Oh, well, he can't exist on backing losers. Isn't it just like him to get married now? He really is the most reckless person. Yes, Dunce is a queer chap. I've always liked him, but I've never quite made him out. Uh, what do you think of his wife? Mabel's a nice child. Awfully gone on him. Is she? Quite indecently, both of them. Mm. They're next door. Who's beyond them? Delevis and Margaret Orme at the end. Uh -huh. Charlie, do you realise that bathroom out there has to wash those four... I know. My grandfather was crazy when he built this wing. Six rooms in a row with balconies like an hotel and only one bath. Ooh. If we hadn't put ours in. What's the time? Mm. Half past eleven. I better get a move on. Oh, who can that be, I wonder? Come in. Hello, Delibis. Anything I can do for you? Yes, sir, I am awfully sorry, Windsor, but I thought I'd better come and tell you at once. I've uh, just had a wrong a lot of money stolen. What? What do you mean? Stolen? I put it under my pillow and went to have a bath. When I came back, it was gone. Good Lord. How much? Nearly a thousand. Oh. 970, I, I think. It's quite too unpleasant. I, I sold my filly rosemary today on the course to Kentman, the bookie, and he paid me a note. What that weed dance here gave you in the spring? Yes, yes. I, I tried it pretty high the other day, and she's in the Cambridge. I was only out of my room for a quarter of an hour, and I locked the door. You locked? Uh, yes. And, and the key, I put it here in my dressing gown pocket. Now, look, my pocketbook's been stuffed with shaving papers. This is extremely awkward, Delevis. Yes. I should like it back. Have you got the numbers of the notes? Uh, no. What were they? Uh, One hundred, three fifties, and the rest tens and fives. Um, what do you want us to do, Mr. Delevis? I think the police ought to see my room, Lady Adela. Oh. It's a lot of money. The police? It'll make the devil of a scandal. Who's next door to me? Oh, Mr. DeLevis. Uh, next to you, the dance is on your right and Miss Orm on the left. What's that to do with it? Uh, they may have heard something. Oh, let's get them. But uh, Dancy was downstairs when I came up. Uh, look here, when was this exactly? Let's have as many alibis as we can. Within the last 15 minutes, certainly. Mm. Adela, would you go and fetch Margaret and the dancers? Yes. There's nobody else in this wing. What about General Canning? I'd consult him if I were you. Right, uh, could you get him too? Do you really want the police to leave us? Yes, I do. Uh, very well. Uh, telephone the police at Newmarket then, Adela, and send treasure up, will you? Yes, dear. <sighs> Look here, De Levis. This isn't an hotel. It's the sort of thing that doesn't happen in a decent house. Are you sure you're not mistaken? Didn't have the money stolen on the course? Absolutely. I counted the notes just before putting them under my pillow. And then I locked the door and had the key here in my pocket. There's only one door, you know. How was your window? Open. You've got a balcony like mine. Any sign of a ladder or anything? No. Well, it must have been done from the window, unless someone had a skeleton key. Who knew you'd got that money? Uh, where did the bookie pay you? Uh, just round the corner in the further paddock. Anybody about? Oh, yes. You must have been marked down and followed here. Now, how would they know my room? You might have got it somehow. Come in. Yes, sir? Oh, treasure. 
Uh, who valets Mr. Delevis? Uh, Robert, sir. When was he up last? In the ordinary course of things, about ten o'clock, sir. Uh, when did he go to bed? I dismissed at eleven. But did he go? To the best of my knowledge. Is there anything I can do, sir? Uh, Mr. Delevis has had a large sum of money taken from his bedroom within the last quarter of an hour. Indeed, sir. Robert's quite all right, isn't he? He is. How do you know? I'm a pretty good judge of character, sir, if you'll excuse me. Look here, Delevis, 80 or 90 notes must have been pretty bulky. You didn't have them on you at dinner? No. Where did you put them? In a... in a boot. And the boot in my suitcase and locked it. And you found it locked and, and, and took them from there to put under your pillow? Yes. Run your mind over things, Treasure. Has any stranger been about? Uh, no, sir. This seems to have happened between 11.15 and 11.30. Is that right, Delevis? Yes. Any noise? Anything outside? Anything suspicious anywhere? No, sir. What time did you shut up? I should say about 11.15, sir. As soon as Major Colford and Captain Dancy had finished billiards. Hmm. What was Mr. Delevis doing out of his room, if I may ask, sir? Having a bath with his room locked and the key in his pocket. Thank you, sir. Oh, damn it! What do you mean? I was. I beg your pardon, sir. Uh, look here, Treasure, it's infernally awkward for everybody. It is, sir. What do you suggest? The proper thing, sir, I suppose, to be a cordon and a complete search. In our interest, no, I entirely refuse to suspect anybody. But if Mr. Delevis feels otherwise, sir... I? All I know is the money was there and it's gone. Quite. It's pretty sickening for you, but so it is for anybody else. However, we must do our best to get it back for you. Here's General Canning. Come along in, General. Uh, what's all this I hear, Windsor? Adela's told you? Yes. Well, General, what's the first move? Uh, Mr. Delevis presses the matter. Unless you think it's too uh, plebeian of me, General Canning. A thousand pounds. Oh, just so. Then we must wait for the police, Windsor. Lady Adela has got through to them. Uh, what height are these rooms from the ground treasure? Uh, Twenty-three feet from the terrace, sir. Any ladders near? One in the stables, sir. Very heavy. No others within 300 yards. Just slip down and see whether that's been moved. Very good, you know. <clears throat> uh, of course, he... Uh, I suppose you... We uh, do. You'd better leave this in our hands to leave it. Uh, certainly. Only the way... Treasure has been here since he was a boy. I should sooner suspect myself. You seem to think that... Well, what was I to do? Take it lying down, let whoever it is get clear off? I suppose it's natural to want my money back. Of course, Delibis. I've told the dances, Charles. She was in bed. They're just coming. And Margaret Orme? She's on her way. I got through to Newmarket and Inspector Deeds coming over on his motorcycle. Oh, thank you, my dear. Well, I'll uh, go to my room. When the police come, uh, perhaps you'll let me know. Phew. Did you ever see such a dressing gown? Am I suspected, Charles? How thrilling! Oh, sorry to get you up, Margaret, but I want to know what time you came upstairs tonight. I came up with Adela. Did you hear anything? Only a little thirdy splashing. And saw nothing? Not even that, alas. Ah, uh, here are the dances. Come in, you two. Oh, awfully sorry to disturb you both, but I, I suppose you and Mabel haven't heard anything, Ronnie. Uh, Delevis' room is just beyond your dressing room, you know. I've only just come up, as a matter of fact. I've been asleep nearly half an hour. Did you happen to look out of your window, Mrs. Dancy? Yes, General. I stood there quite five minutes. When? About eleven, I should think. It was raining hard. Yes, it's just stopped. You saw nothing? No. What time does Delevis say the money was taken? Between the quarter and half past, he'd locked his door and had the key with him. How quaint. Just like an hotel. Does he put his boots out? <laughs> Don't be so naughty, Margaret. What time exactly did you come up, Dancy? Oh, about ten minutes ago, General. I'd only just got to my dressing room before Lady Adela came. I've been writing letters in the hall since Colford and I finished billiards. You didn't come upstairs for anything in between? No. The mystery of the grave? Well, often the grounds you searched for footmarks. That's for the police. Jeez. Are they coming? Directly. Ah, treasure, what did you find? The ladder has not been moved, General. There isn't a sign. All right. Get Robert up, but don't say anything to him. By the way, we're expecting the police. I trust they will not find a mare's nest, sir. Uh, if I may say so. The Levis has got wrong with treasure. But I say, what would any of us have done if we'd been in his shoes? A thousand pounds. I can't even conceive having it. We probably shouldn't have found it out. No, Ronnie, but if we had. Come to you, as he did? Yes, but there's a way of doing things, Ronnie. We shouldn't have wanted the police. No, that's it. The hotel touch. Mm, poor young man. I think we're rather hard on him. 
He sold that filly you gave him, Ronnie, to Kentman, the bookie, and these were the proceeds. Oh. He tried a high, he said. He would. Oh, Ronnie, what bad luck. He must have been followed here. After rain like we've had, there ought to be footmarks. Come in. What is it, Treasure? Inspector Deed, sir. Well, show him up. Robert is in readiness, sir, but I could swear he knows nothing about it. All right. What's the move now, General? Oh, you and I had better see him in Delibus's room, Windsor. The rest of you had better go to your rooms, but be handy in case you're wanted. Very well, General. Come along, everyone. I hope the inspector will want me. It's just too thrilling. Well, I hope he won't want me. I'm dog tired. Come on, Mabel. Oh, for my warm bed. You know, Windsor, we must be careful with this inspector fellow. Mm. If he pitches hastily on somebody in the house, it'll be very disagreeable. By Jove, it will. Oh, we don't want to rouse any ridiculous suspicion. Inspector Deeds, sir. Oh, come in, Inspector. Sorry to have brought you out at this time of night. Good evening, sir. Mr. Windsor? Yes? You're the owner here, I think. Yes, and this is General Canning. Good evening, General Good evening. Canning. Uh, Mr. Windsor, I understand a large sum of money. Yes, yes, we shall go straight to the room it was taken from. One of my guests, Mr. Delevis. It's the third room on the left. We've not been in there yet, Inspector. In fact, we've done nothing except to find out that the stable ladder has not been moved. We haven't even searched the grounds. Right, sir. If you'll just show the way to Mr. Delevis' room... No, Mr. Delevis. If this is the room as you left it for your bath, just show us exactly what you did after taking the pocketbook from the suitcase. Where was the suitcase, by the way? Uh, where it is now, under the dressing table. Inspector, I, I took my pocketbook from the suitcase and counted the note like, like this. I slipped the pocketbook under my pillow, like this, and then took the key out of the door, locked it behind me, and went to the bathroom with the key in my pocket, like this. Uh, that is sufficient, sir. No need to go any further. Well, Mr. Windsor, General Canning, we now have the room as it was when the theft was committed. Now, assuming the thief to be in the room, what would he try first? The clothes, the dressing table, the suitcase, the chest of drawers, and last, the bed. The order would have been just the other way, Windsor. What was that, General? Uh, nothing, Inspector, nothing. Did you open the window, Mr. Delevis, or was it open when you first came in? I opened it. Drawing the curtains back first? Yes. Are you sure there was nobody in the room already? Well, I, I don't know. I, I never thought of it. I, I didn't look under the bed, if you mean that. Did you look under it after the theft? No, I didn't. Ah. Now, what did you do after you came back from your bath? Just give us that, precisely. Locked the door and left the key in. Took off my dressing gown and put it there... And then I drew the curtains again. Shutting the window? No, no, I got into bed, felt for my watch to see the time, and my hand struck the pocketbook, and somehow it, it felt thinner. I took it out, looked into it, found the notes had gone, and these shaving papers there instead. Let me have a look at those. Uh, thank you. Mm -hmm. And then? I think I... I just sat on my bed. Thinking and cursing a bit, I suppose. Th then I put on my dressing gown and went straight to Mr. Windsor. Uh, not locking the door? No. Exactly. No, sir... What time did you come up to bed? About 11. Precisely, if you can give it me. Uh, well, I, I, I know it was about 11.15 when I put the watch under my pillow before I went to the bath. <laughs> I suppose I must have been about a quarter of an hour undressing. I should say, well, after 11, if anything. Just undressing? Didn't look over your betting book? No. No prayers or anything? No. Pretty slippy with your undressing as a rule? Yes, uh, say five past 11. Quite so. This is just clearing the ground, sir. Uh, General, do you mind touching that bell? Uh, certainly. Well, gentlemen, there are four possibilities. Now, either the thief was here all the time, waiting under the bed, and slipped out after this gentleman had gone to Mr. Windsor. Or he came in with a key that fits the lock, and I will want to see all the keys in the house. Or he came in with a skeleton key and out by the window, probably dropping from the balcony. Or he came in by the window with a rope or ladder and out the same way. There's a footmark here from a big boot which has been out of doors since it rained. Inspector, you walked up to the window when you first came into the room. <coughs> I'd not overlooked that, General. Of course. Yes? Oh, come in, Robert. Ah, you're Mr. Delevis's valet, I think. Uh, yes, sir. At what time did you take this gentleman's clothes and boots? Uh, ten o'clock, sir. Did you happen to look under his bed? Uh, no, sir. 
Did you come up again to bring the clothes back? Uh, no, sir. They're still downstairs. Did you come up again for anything? Uh, no, sir. Uh, what time did you go to bed? Um, just after 11, sir. Did you notice anything particular about Mr. DeLevis's clothes? Only that they were very good, sir. You know, I mean, anything peculiar? Uh, yes, sir. Well? A pair of his boots this evening was reduced to one, sir. Oh. What did you make of that? I thought he might have thrown the other at a cat or something. Did you look for it? Uh, no, sir. I meant to draw his attention to it in the morning. Uh, very good. Yes, sir. Well, Mr. DeLevis, there's your story corroborated. I don't know why it should need corroboration, Inspector. Well, in my experience, you can never have too much of that. I understand, Mr. Windsor, there's a lady in the room on the left and a gentleman on the right. Oh. Were they in their rooms? Miss Orme was, uh, Captain Dunsey not. Do they know of the affair? Uh, yes. Ah. Well, I'd just like the keys of their doors for a few minutes. In fact, I'll have to try every key in the house. Inspector, do you really think it necessary to disturb the whole house and knock up all my guests? It's most disagreeable, all this, you know. We don't want a scandal. Well, Mr. Windsor, I've formed a theory. And I don't say to try the keys is necessary to it, but strictly, I ought to exhaust the possibilities. What do you say, Delibis? Do you want everybody in the house knocked up so that their keys can be tried? No, I don't. What is your theory, Inspector? In my opinion, the thief walked in before the door was locked, probably during dinner, and was under the bed. Mm. He escaped by dropping from the balcony. The creeper at the left side has been violently wrecked. I don't agree. I, I, I don't agree at all. Nevertheless, Mr. DeLevis, that is my theory. I'll uh, go down now, Mr. Windsor, mm. and examine the ground. As I come with you, Inspector. General? Yes? I know who took my money. The deuce you do, Delevis. Are you following the inspector's theory? Oh, that ass, no. The man who took my money was clever and cool enough to wrench that creeper off the balcony as a blind. Come and look here, General. Look, you see the rail of my balcony and the rail of the next one? I've measured it with the cord of my dressing gown. It's just over seven feet, that's all. Now, if a man can make a standing jump to a narrow bookcase four feet high and balance there, he'd make nothing of that. And look here. Someone stood on this creeper. The stalk's crushed, you see. The inner corner, too, where he'd naturally stand when he took his jump. That other balcony is young Dancy's, Mr. DeLevis. A soldier and a gentleman. This is in an extraordinary insinuation. Accusation. What? I have intuitions, General. It's in my blood. I see the whole thing. Dancy came up, watched me into the bathroom, tried my door, slipped back into his dressing room, saw my window was open, took that jump, sneaked the notes, wrenched the keeper there for a blind, jumped back and slipped downstairs again. It didn't take him four minutes altogether. This is outrageous, Delevis. Dancy says he was downstairs all the time. You must either withdraw unreservedly or I must confront you with him. If he'll return the notes and apologize, I'll do nothing. Except cut him in future. He gave me that filly, you know, as a hopeless weed. And he's been pretty sick ever since that he was such a fool as not to see how good she was. Besides, he's hard up, I know. It's mad, sir, to jump to conclusions like this. Not so mad as the conclusion Dancy jumped to when he alighted on my balcony. Nobody could have taken this money who didn't know you had it. How do you know that he didn't know? Do you know that he did? I haven't the least doubt of it. Without any proof. This is very ugly, Delevis. I must tell Windsor. Oh, tell the whole blooming lot. You think I've no feelings. But I've felt the atmosphere here. I can tell you, General. If I were in Dancy's shoes and he's in mine, your tone to me would be very different. I'm not aware of using any tone, as you call it. But this is a private house, Mr. Delevis, and something is due to our host and to the esprit de corps that exists among gentlemen. Since when is a thief a gentleman? Thick as thieves. A good motto, isn't it? That's enough. Now, look here. I have some knowledge of the world. Once an accusation like this passes beyond these walls, no one can foresee the consequences. Captain Dancy is a gallant fellow with a fine record as a soldier, and only just married. However innocent he may be, mud will stick to him unless the real thief is found. In the old days of Saws, either you or he would not have gone out of this room alive. If you persist in this absurd accusation, you will, both of you, go out of this room dead in the eyes of society. You for bringing it, he for being the object of it. Society? Do you think I don't know that I'm only tolerated for my money? Society can't add injury to insult and have my money as well, that's all. If the notes are restored, I'll keep my mouth shut. If they're not, I shan't. I I'm certain, I ask nothing better than to be confronted with Dancy. 
But if you prefer it, deal with him in your own way. For the sake of your esprit de corps. Upon my soul, Mr. Delevis, you go too far. Not as far as I shall go, General Canning, if those notes aren't given back. Well, Delevis, I'm afraid that's all we can do for the present. So very sorry this should have happened in my house. Why, what's the matter with you both? There's a development, Windsor. Mr. Delevis accuses one of your guests... What? ...of jumping from his balcony to this, taking the notes and oh. jumping back. I've done my best to dissuade him from indulging the fancy without success. Dancy must be told. You can deal with Dancy in your own way. All I want is my money back. Mr. Delevis feels that he's only valued for his money so that it is essential for him to have it back. Well, this is monstrous, Delevis. I've known Ronald Dancy since he was a boy. You talk about adding injury to insult, Delevis. What do you call such treatment of a man who gave you the mare out of which you made this thousand pounds? I didn't want the mare. I took her as a favor. With an eye to possibilities, I venture to think. The principle guides a good many transactions. In my race. Do you mean? I said nothing of the sort. No, you don't say these things, any of you. Really, Delevis, if this is the way you repay hospitality... Hospitality that skins my feeling and costs me a thousand pounds? Go and get down, say, Windsor. But don't say anything Very to well. Me. Perhaps you will kindly control yourself, Delevis, and leave this to me. Cigarette? Oh. No? Then I will. Ah, there you are, Dancy. What's the trouble? Dancy, for Windsor's sake, we don't want any scandal or fuss about this affair. We've tried to make the police understand that. To my mind, the whole thing turns on our finding who knew that Delevis had this money. It's about that that we want to consult you. Kentman paid Delevis round the corner in the further paddock, he says. Uh, did you hear anything that throws light, Dancy? As it was your filly originally, we thought perhaps you might. I? No. Didn't hear of the sale on the course at all? No. Then you can't suggest anyone who could have known? No. But nothing else was taken, you see. <laughs> Delevis is known to be rolling, as I am known to be stony. There are a good many people still rolling besides Mr. Delevis, but not so many people with so large a sum in their pocketbooks. He won two races. Do you suggest that I bet in ready money? I don't know how you bet, and I don't care. You can't help us, then? No, I can't. Anything else? Nothing else. Right. Thank you, Dancy. I'll go to bed, then. Good night, old chap. Good night, Dancy. Good night. You see, Delevis, he didn't even know you got the money. Oh, very conclusive. Well, you are. I'm just going, gentlemen. The grounds, I'm sorry to say, have yielded nothing. It's... Uh, <laughs> It's a bit of a puzzle. You've searched thoroughly. We have, General. I can pick up nothing near the terrors. Mm. You'll take it up from the other end, then, Inspector? Well, we'll see what we can do with the bookmaker about the numbers, sir. Mm. Before I go, gentlemen, you've had time to think it over. There's no one you suspect in the house, I suppose. No, no. well... I... No one, Inspector, no one. If you're coming into the racing tomorrow, Mr. Windsor, you might give us a call. I'd have seen Kentman by then. That you are, Inspector. Good night and many thanks. You're welcome, sir. Good night. Where's the Levis got to, General? On the balcony. We must stop his tongue. Imagine it going the rounds. They may never find the real thief, you know. It's the very devil for Dancy. Windsor, Dancy's sleeve was damp. What do you mean, General? I put my hand on his shoulder as he was leaving, and his sleeve was quite damp. Huh? It's been raining. I don't follow. It was coming down hard. A minute out in it would have been enough. But he must have been out on his balcony since. It stopped before I came up half an hour ago. He's been leaning on the wet stone, then. With the outside of the upper part of the arm. <sighs> Against the wall, perhaps. There may be a dozen explanations. I, I entirely and absolutely refuse to believe anything of the sort against Ronald Dancy in my house. Dash it, General, we must do as we'd be done by. It hits us all. The thing's intolerable. I agree. Intolerable. Uh, Mr. DeLevis. Yes? Mr. Delevis, young Dancy was an officer and is a gentleman. This insinuation is pure supposition and you must not make it. Do you understand me? My tongue is still mine, General. If my money isn't. Must not. You're a member of three clubs, you want to be a member of a fourth. No one who makes such an insinuation against a fellow guest in a country house except on absolute proof can do so without complete ostracism. Have we your word to say nothing? <laughs> Social blackmail, I see. 
Not at all. Simple warning. If you consider it necessary in your interests to start this scandal, no matter how, we shall consider it necessary to dissociate ourselves completely from one who so recklessly disregards the unwritten code. Do you think your code applies to me? Do you, General? To anyone who aspires to be a gentleman, ah, sir. Ah, but you haven't known me since I was a boy. Make up your mind. I'm not a fool, General. I know very well that you can get me outed. Well? I'll say nothing about it. Unless I get more proof. Good. We have implicit faith in Dancy. Good night, Delibis. Implicit faith? Rats! <laughs> Not a patch on the old whist this game wins up. <laughs> Don't know why I play bridge. St. Earth, shall we raise the flag for whist in the club? Oh, no go, General. You can't go back on pace. No getting a man to walk when he knows he can fly. The young men won't look at it. It's better develop it so the two can sit out, General. Not a bad idea, Barry. Yeah, we ought to have stuck to the old game. Mm. Now, what's the time? Quarter past three. Let's hear what won the Cambridge mm. ring, won't you, Windsor? Certainly. Well, by the way, Canning, young Delevis was blackballed. What? But of course he was, General. What did you expect? Yes, my lord. What won Cambridge? Rosemary, sir. Oh, good Lord. Sherbet second, Bob is on third. Nine to one, the winner. Oh, thank you. Rosemary? And to leave it sold her. But he got a good price, I suppose. Many a step between the price and pocket, Boring. I say, is that the yarn that's going round about his having a lot of money stolen in a country house a few weeks ago? By Jove, he'll be pretty sick. Oh, hello, Colford. General. Good Lord, Colford, what's the matter? I want your advice. The Levis has started a blasphemous story. One moment. Mr. Boring, do you mind? It makes no odds, General. Four of us in the billiard room heard him. He's saying it was Ronald Dancy who robbed him three weeks ago at Windsor's. What? Oh, the fellow's mad over losing the price of that filly now she's won the Cambridge. Dancy? Great Scott. Dancy's in the club. If he hadn't been, I'd have taken it upon myself to wring Delevis's neck. Colford, ask Delevis to be good enough to come in here. Uh, Boring, you might see that Dancy doesn't leave the club. We shall want him. Uh, don't say anything to him and use your tact to keep people off. Very well. I say. Result of hearing he was blackballed. Pretty slippy. St. Earth, I told you there was good reason when I asked you to back young Delevis. Mm. Uh, Windsor and I knew of this insinuation. I wanted to keep his tongue quiet. Oh, it's just wild assertion. To have it bandied about was unfair to Dancy. The duel used to keep people's tongues in order. Mm, never settle anything, except who could shoot straightest. Well, Colford? Delevis says he's nothing to add to what he said to you before on the subject. Kindly tell him that if he wishes to remain a member of the club, he must account to the committee for such a charge against a fellow member. Four of us are here and form quorum. Very well. Did Kentman ever give the police the numbers of those notes, Windsor? No, he only had the number of two, the hundred and one of the fifties. Well, they haven't traced them. Not yet. <laughs> well, General Canning, it's a little too strong. It's a little too strong. It's obvious, Mr. Delevis, that you and Captain Dancy can't both remain members of this club. We ask you for an explanation before requesting one resignation or the other. You've let me down. What? Well, I shall tell people that you and Lord St. Earth backed me up for one club and asked me to resign from another. It's a matter of indifference to me, sir, what you tell people. You seem a venomous young man. I'll tell you what seems to be venomous, my lord. Chasing a man like a pack of hounds because he isn't your breed. You appear to have your breed on the brain, sir. Nobody else has, so far as I know. Suppose I had robbed Dancy. Would you chase him out for complaining of it? What? If you repeat that... Steady, Colford. You make this accusation that Dancy stole your money in my house on no proof. No proof. And you expect Dancy's friends to treat you as if you were a gentleman. That's too strong if you like. No proof. Kentman told me at Newmarket yesterday that Dancy did know of the sale. He told Gould. Gould says that he himself spoke of it to Dancy. Well, if he did. Well, Dancy told you he didn't know of it. In General Kenning's presence and mine. You can't deny that, General. If you want to. Choose your expressions more nicely, please. Proof. Did they find any footmarks in the grounds below the torn creeper? Not a sign. You saw how he can jump. He won ten pounds from me the same evening, betting on what he knew to be a certainty. That's your dancy, a common sharper. Are those fellows still in the billiard room, Colford? Yes. Then bring Dancy here, will you? But don't say anything to him. You may think yourself lucky, Delevis, if he doesn't break your neck. <laughs> I have a memory and a sting, too. Yes, my lord. 
Since you are good enough to call me venomous, I quite understand. I'm marked for Coventry now, whatever happens. Well, I'll take Dancy with me. This club has always had a decent, quiet name. Mm. Are you going to retract and apologise in front of Dancy and the members who heard you? No. You must be a very rich man, sir. The jury is likely to take the view that money can hardly compensate for an accusation of that sort. Courts of law require proof. He can make it a criminal action. Unless you stop this at once, you may find yourself in prison. If you can stop it, that is. If I young Dancy, nothing should induce me. Ah, but you didn't steal my money, Lord St. Earth. You're deuced positive, sir. So far as I could understand it, there are a dozen ways you could have been robbed. It seems to me you value other men's reputations very lightly. Confront me with Dancy and give me fair play. Canning, is it fair to Dancy not to let him know? Our duty is to the club now, Windsor. We must have this cleared up. Uh, St. Earth, will you... Uh... Very well. Ah, Dancy. Thank you, Colford. Will you close the door? Get in, Dancy. A serious accusation has been made against you by this gentleman in the presence of several members of the club. What is it? That you robbed him of that money at Windsor's place three weeks ago. Indeed. On what grounds? Is he good enough to say that? You gave that filly to save yourself her keep. And you've been mad about it ever since. You knew from Ghoul that I'd sold her to Kentman and been paid in cash. Yet I heard you deny that you knew it. You had the room next to me and you can jump like a cat. As we saw that evening, I found some creepers crushed by the weight on my balcony on that side. And when I went to the bath, your door was open. But when I came back, it was shut. Well, that's the first we've heard about the door. Yeah, I, rem I remembered it afterwards. Oh. Well, Dancy. I'll settle this matter with any weapons when and where he likes. Oh. It can't be settled that way, you know very well. We must take it to the courts, unless he retracts. Will you retract, Delivers? Why did you tell General Canning you didn't know Kentman had paid me in cash? Because I didn't. Then Kentman and Gould lied for no reason? That's nothing to do with me. If you were downstairs all the time, as you say, why was your door first open and then shut? Being downstairs, how should I know? The wind, probably. I should like to hear what your wife says about it. You leave my wife alone, you damn Jew! Captain Dancy! Thief! Will you fight? Well, you're very smart. Dead men tell no tales. No. Bring your action and we shall see. Yes, that'll do, Mr. Delevis. We won't keep you. Kindly consider your membership suspended until this matter has been thrashed out. Oh, don't trouble yourselves about my membership. I resign. Dancy, you called me a damned Jew. My race was old when you were all savages. I'm proud to be a Jew. Au revoir. In the courts. Well, Captain Dancy... If the brute won't fight, what am I to do, sir? We told you. Take action to clear your name. Culford, you saw me in the hall that night writing letters after our game. Certainly I did. You were there when I went to the smoking room. How long after you left the billiard room? About five, five minutes. But it's impossible for me to prove that I was there all the time. It's for Delevis to prove what he asserts. You heard what he said about Ghoul. If he told me, I didn't take it in. This concerns the honour of the club. Are you going to take action? Well, that is very expensive business, Lord Sir Durth, and I am hard up. I must think it over. Am I to take it that there is doubt in your minds, gentlemen? No. That's not the question, Dancy. This accusation was overheard by various members, and we represent the club. If you don't take action, judgment will naturally go by default. I might prefer to look on the whole thing as beneath contempt. Will you excuse me now? Golford. The general felt his coat sleeve that night, and it was wet. Well, what proves that? No, by George, a brother officer and a friend. If he did do it, he didn't. But if he did, I'd stick to him and see him through it if I could. It's monstrous, Margaret. Of course. Delivis might just as well have pitched on me, except that I can't jump more than six inches in these skirts. It's wicked. Yesterday afternoon at the club, did you say? And yes, I came round to you as soon as I could this morning. Ronnie hasn't said a word to me. Why? Uh, haven't you found out, Mabel, that he isn't exactly communicative? No desperate character is. Ronnie? Gracious. Wives are at a disadvantage, especially early on. 
You've never hunted with him, my dear. I have. He takes more sudden decisions than any man I ever knew. He's taking one now, I'll bet. I was in our room next door all the time. Was the door into Ronnie's dressing room open? I don't know. I think it was. Well, you can say so in court anyway. Not that it matters. Wives are liars by law. What do you mean? Court? My dear, he'll have to bring an action for defamation character or whatever they call it. Why, they were talking of this last night at the Windsor. Well, you know, a dinner table, Mabel. Scandal is heaven sent at this time of year. It's terrible, such a thing. Terrible. If only Ronnie weren't known to be so broke. I can't realise. I simply can't. If there is a case, would it be all right afterwards? Do you remember St. Ovid? Cards? No, he was still in a gym tunic. Well, St. Offord got damages, but he also got the hoof. He lives in Ireland. There isn't the slightest connection, as far as I can see, Mabel, between innocence and reputation. Look at me. Well, we'll fight it tooth and nail. Mabel, you're pure wool right through. Everybody's sorry for you. It's for him they ought to be... It isn't altogether simple. General Canning was at the Windsor's last night. You don't mind my being beastly frank, do you? No, I want it. Well, he's all for esprit de corps and that. But he was awfully silent. I hate half hearted Loyalty comes before everything. Yes, but loyalties cut up against each other sometimes, you know. I must see Ronnie. Do you mind if I go and try to get him on the telephone? Rather not. Oh, bother. At the front door. You go and telephone Ronnie. I'll see who it is. Oh, would you mind? Run along, child. Hello, Margaret. Hello, Adela. Mabel. Telephoning in the bedroom, I said I'd answer the door. Oh. Enter the second murderer. What do you mean? My dear, do you know that child knew nothing? Oh, poor kid. Adela, if there's going to be an action, we shall be witnesses. I shall wear a black georgette with an ecru hat. Have you ever given evidence? Never, Margaret. It must be frightfully thrilling. Oh, why did I ever ask that wretch to leave us to Meldon Court? I used to think him pathetic. <laughs> Margaret, did you know that Ronnie's coat was wet? The general happened to feel it. So that's why the general was so silent last night. Yes. And after the scene in the club yesterday, he went to see those bookmakers and Ghoul, oh, what a name, is sure he told Ronnie about the sale. I don't care. Ronnie's my third cousin. Don't you feel you couldn't, Adela? Couldn't? Stand for Delevis against one of yourselves. Oh, that's very narrow, Margaret. Oh, I know lots of splendid jewels, and I rather like little Ferdy, but when it comes to the point... Oh. They all stick together. Why shouldn't we... It's in the blood. Open your jugular and see if you haven't got it. My dear, my great-grandmother was a Jewess. I'm very proud of her. Inoculated. Prejudices, Adela. Or are they loyalties? I don't know. Criss-cross. We all cut each other's throats from the best of motives. Poor little Mabel. You don't really think Ronnie... I don't know, Adela. There are people who simply can't live without danger. I'm rather like that myself. They're all right when they're getting the DSO or shooting man-eaters, but if there's no excitement going, they'll make it out of sheer craving. I've seen Ronnie do the maddest things for no mortal reason except the risk. He's had a past, you know. Really? He did splendidly in the war, of course, because it suited him. But just before, about 1913 it would be, there was a very queer bit of riding. I don't remember. Most daredevil thing, but not quite... Uh... It was awfully talked about. And then, of course, right up to his marriage. Margaret, you're very tantalizing. A foreign-looking girl, most plummy. Oh, Ronnie's got charm. This Mabel child doesn't know in the least what she's got hold of. But they're so fond of each other. That's the mistake. The general isn't mentioning the coat, is he? Oh, no, it was old Charles. Hello, Adela. I'm sorry, I was trying to phone Ronnie. Did you get him all right? No. Not at Tattersall's, nor the club. Oh, my dear, I want to tell you how sorry I am. Of course nobody's going to believe this story. Well, nobody who does need come here. Or trouble to speak to us again. Oh, that's what I was afraid of. You're going to be defiant. Now, don't. Just be perfectly natural. So easy, isn't it? I could kill anybody who believes such a thing. You'll want a solicitor, Mabel. Go to old Mr. Jacob Twiston. Yes. He's so comforting. A frightfully good fireside manner. Do get him here, Mabel, and have a heart-to-heart -heart talk, all three of you. Listen, there's Ronnie. Oh, Ronnie, you're here at last. Hello, darling. Adela and Margaret are here. Oh. 
Hello, Adler. Hello. Margaret. Very good of you to have come. We're just going. Oh, Ronnie, this is quite too... Yes, Margaret. Never mind. Goodbye, Mabel, dear. Goodbye, Margaret. Charles sent his love. That was kind of him, Adela. Well, goodbye, Mabel. I must catch Margaret up. No, don't see me out. Hmm. What have they been saying? Rolly, why didn't you tell me? I wanted to see Delevis again first. That wretch! How dare he! Oh, darling. Why, what's the matter? Don't, Mabel. Don't look like that. I'm sorry. It's all right. It's hurt you awfully, I know. This is a ghastly, tame cat sort of life. Let's cut it and get out to Nairobi. I can scare up the money for that. But, Ronnie, how can we? Everybody would say that Let you... them. We shan't be here. Oh, I couldn't bear people to think that I don't had... care a drop what people think. Monkeys and cats, they never could stand their rotten menagerie. Besides, what does it matter how I act? If I bring an action and get damages, if I pound a levis to a jelly, it's all no good. I can't prove it. There'll be plenty of people unconvinced. But they'll find the real thief. Will staying here help them to do that? Oh, I couldn't. It looks like running away. We must stay and fight it. Suppose I didn't get a verdict. You never can tell. But you must. I was there all the time with the door open. Was it? I'm almost sure. Yes, but you're my wife. Only I don't understand. Suppose I had been accused of stealing pearls. Oh, I can't imagine such a thing. Well, I might just as easily. What would you think of me if I ran away from it? I see. All right. You shall have a run for your money. I'll go and see old Twister. Oh, let me come. No. Oh, why not? I can't be happy a moment unless I'm fighting this. Oh, man's coming in. You are a little brick. Do you know what Margaret called you? No. A desperate character. <laughs> I'm not a tame cat any more than she is. Oh, I'll see who that is. I must be seeing Captain Darcy, if I may. Will you wait a moment, please? It's the to see you. What? Ronnie, let me see him alone first. Go into the bedroom just for a minute, oh. do. Oh, very well. Come in, Mr. Delevis. Thank you. Yes, Mr. Delevis. Uh, your husband, Mrs. Dancy? He is in. Why do you want to see him? He came round to my rooms just now when I was out. He threatened me yesterday. I don't choose him to suppose I'm afraid of him. Mr. DeLevis, you are robbing my husband of his good name. I admire your trustfulness, Mrs. Dancy. How can you do it? What's your motive? You can't possibly believe that my husband is a thief. Unfortunately. How dare you? How dare you? Don't you know that I was in our bedroom all the time with the door open? Do you accuse me, too? No, Mrs. Dance. But you do? I must have seen, I must have heard. A wife's memory is not very good when her husband is in danger. In other words, I'm lying. No, your wish is mother to your thought, that's all. Mr. Delevis, I appeal to you as a gentleman to behave to us as you would we should behave to you. Withdraw this wicked charge. And write an apology that my husband can show. Mrs. Dancy, I am not a gentleman. I am only a damned Jew. Yesterday I might possibly have withdrawn to spare you, but when my race is insulted, I have nothing to say to your husband. However, as he wishes to see me, I have come. Please let him know. I think what you're doing is too horrible for words. Ronnie? Well? You came round to my rooms this morning, Dancy. Yes. I want you to sign this paper. I will sign nothing. Let me read it. I apologize to Captain Dancy for the reckless and monstrous charge I made against him. And I retract every word of it. Not much. 
You will sign. I tell you, this is useless. I will not sign. The charge is true. You wouldn't play this game if it weren't. I'm going. Look here. No, you'll hardly try violence in the presence of your wife. And if you try it anywhere else, look out for yourself. Mabel, I want to speak to him alone. No, no. Quite right, Mrs. Dancy. Swashbuckling will only make things worse for him. So, you shelter behind a woman, do you, you cur? I'm just waiting for the chance to get my hands on you. Barry, don't. Don't. He isn't worth it. No, well, then. Get out of here, you swine. Go on. What are you waiting for? Please go, Mr. Delivers. Good day to you both. We'll see myself out. Thank you. Well, do you agree with him? What do you mean? That I wouldn't be playing this game and... Don't! I... You hurt me. Yes. You don't know much of me, Mabel. Ronnie! What did you say to that swine before I came in? That he was robbing us. Ronnie, you didn't. I'd rather not. I thought that was coming. Oh, how horrible. How horrible. Not at all. The thing looks bad. Oh, but if I can't believe in you, who can? Oh, Ronnie, if all the world were against you, I'd believe in you. You, you know I would. That's all right, perhaps. That's all right. Well... What shall we do? Oh, let's go to that lawyer, Twiston. Let's go at once. Uh, Mr. Gilman, sir, to see Mr. Twiston. Uh, by appointment? Uh, no, sir, uh, but important, he says. I'll see him. In here, sir. Mr. Gilman? Yes, Mr. Jacob Twiston. I'm his partner. Gravitor's my name. Uh, Mr. Twiston's not in, then? No, no, he's the courts. Uh, just up. He should be in directly, but uh, he'll be busy. Oh, it's this Dancy G. Levis case that's keeping him at the courts, I suppose? Yes. Won't be finished for a day or two? No. Mm, Astonishing interest taken in it. As you say. The smart set, eh? This Captain Dancy got the dear so, didn't he? Uh, he did. Sad to have a thing like that said about you. I thought he gave his evidence well, and his wife, too. Looks as if this de Levis had got some private spite. Mm, Sir Chila Femme, I said to Mrs. Gilman, only this morning, before I left uh, the by house... By the way, sir, uh, what is your business? Well, my business... <laughs> no, if you'll excuse me, I'd rather wait and see old Mr. Jacob Twizzy. It's delicate, and I'd like his experience. Oh, very well, then. Uh, perhaps you'll wait in the next room. Uh, thank you. You see, I've never been mixed up with the law. No. And I don't want to begin. When you do, you don't know where you'll stop, do you? <laughs> you see, I've only come from a sense of duty and uh, other reasons. Not uncommon. Uh, this is my card. Gilman's. Several branches, but this is the it. Exactly. Grocery. I dare say you know me. <laughs> or your wife does. They say old Mr. Jacob Twiston refused a knighthood. If it's not a rude question, why was that? Ask him, sir. Ask him. I said to my wife at the time... He's holding out for a baronet, sir. Yes, 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 it's quite. Now, if you'll excuse me. Uh, holding out for a baron, sir, indeed. Mr. Windsor, sir, and Miss Orme. How do you do, Miss Orme? How do you do, Windsor? How do you do? How do, you do? Twister not back, Gravitor? Uh, not yet. Well, they've got through De Levis's witnesses. Sir Frederick was at the very top of his form. It's looking quite well. But I hear they've just subpoenaed Canning, after all. His evidence is to be taken tomorrow. Oh. I said Dancy ought to have called him. Uh, we considered it. Uh, Sir Frederick decided that he could use him better in cross-examination. Oh. Well, I don't know that. Can I go and see him before he gives evidence tomorrow? I should like to hear Mr. Jacob on that, Windsor. He'll be in directly. They had Kentman and Gould, the inspector, my footman, Dancy's banker and his tailor. Uh, did we say Kentman or Gould? Uh, very little. Oh, by the way, the numbers of those two notes were given, and I see they're published in the evening papers. I suppose the police wanted that. I tell you what I find, Graviter, a general feeling that there's a, something behind it all that doesn't come out. The public wants its money's worth, always does in these society cases. They brew so long before, and you see. I'm looking for something lurid. When I was in the box, I thought they were looking at me. I suppose I mustn't smoke, Mr. Graviter. Oh, do. When Mr. Jacob have a fit? Uh, yes, but not till you've gone. Just a whiff. 
It's becoming a sort of Dreyfus case. People taking sides quite outside the evidence. There are more of the chosen in court every day, Mr. Graviter. Have you noticed the two on the jury? Uh, no, I can't say... Oh, I... but quite distinctly. Don't you think they ought to have been challenged? Uh, and Olivia's might have challenged the other ten, Miss Orme. Dear me, now. I never thought of that. Mm. Ah, how are you, Charles? <laughs> well, thank you. How do you do, my dear? Oh, dear Mr. Jacob, I'm smoking. Isn't it disgusting? Uh, they don't allow it in court, you know. Uh, it does not become everybody as it becomes you, Margaret. Mr. Jacob, how charming. Uh, there's a man called Gilman waiting next door to see you specially, sir. Uh, directly, directly. Uh, right, sir. Uh, do excuse me. Now, then. Mr. Twisden, now General Canning is going to be called. Oughtn't Dancy to be told of it so that he may be ready with his explanation in case what the General knows comes up? Without knowing what that is, I can't tell you. Tell him, Charles. Well, it rained that evening at Meldon. The General happened to put his hand on Dancy's shoulder and it was damp. Hmm. I take it the General Canning won't say anything he's not compelled to say. No, but Mr. Jacob, they might ask. They know it rained, and he wouldn't lie. They didn't ask either of you. Still, there's no harm in your telling Dancy. I'd rather you did it, Margaret. I dare say. Well, we'll go together. I don't want Mrs. Dancy to hear. Do tell me, Mr. Jacob, is he going to win? I think so, Margaret, I think so. It'll be too frightful if he doesn't get a verdict after all this. But I don't know what we shall do when it's over. I've been sitting in that court all these three days watching... And it's made me feel there's nothing we like better than seeing people skinned. Well, we must be going. Bless you. Goodbye, my dear. And don't worry. Goodbye. Coming, Charles. I'll follow you in a moment, Margaret. Very well. Mr. Twisden, what do you really think? I am Dancy's lawyer, my dear Charles, as well as yours. Well, can I go and see Canning? Better not. Well, if they got that out of him and recall me, am I to say he told me of it at the time? You didn't feel the coat yourself? No. And Dancy was not present? No. Well, then what Canning told you is not evidence. We'll stop your being asked. Oh, thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye. Now, uh, was it that Gravity said? Uh, yes, yes, his card. Gilman. Gilman. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Gilman. Will you step this way? Mr. Twisden? That's right, yes. Good afternoon. Uh, you have my card, uh, Head of Gittleman's uh, Department Stores. Yes, 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 yes. Take a seat, please. Uh, what can we do for you? Well, I've come to you from a sense of duty, sir, and also a feeling of embarrassment. You see, I've been following this Dancy case. It's a good deal talked of in Putney, and I read this at half past two this afternoon, uh, to be precise, at 2.25. Uh, take a look at the evening paper, sir. Um, uh, well... That paragraph there. Now, when I've read those numbers, I happen to remember giving change for a £50 note. Turn off nerve one in, you know. So I went to the cash box out of curiosity to see that I hadn't got it. Well, I had. And here it is. Uh, what's this? Uh, uh, the £50 bank note. And where did this come from? Oh, it was brought in to change by a customer of mine three days ago, and he got value for it. Now, that's a stolen note, it seems, and you'd like to know what I did. What did you do, Mr. Gilman? Oh, mind you, that customer of mine, I've known him, well, eight or nine years. An Italian he is, wine salesman, and so far as I know, a respectable man. Foreign-looking, but nothing more. Now, this was at half past two. And I was at my head branch at Putney, where I live. That was this afternoon, I understand. Yes, at half past two. I want you to mark the time so as you'll see I haven't wasted a minute. I took a cab and drove straight to my customer's private residence in Putney, where he lives with his daughter. Uh, Ricardos, his name is. Paulio Ricardos. Now, they tell me there that he's at his business shop in the city. So off I go in the cab again, and there I find him. And then what did you do? Well, sir, I showed this newspaper to him, and I produced the note. Here, I said, you brought this to me, and you got value for it. Well, that man was taken aback. You mean guilty? No, flummox-like. Now, I said to him, where did you get it? That's the point. He took his time to answer, and then he said... Well, Mr. Gilman, he said, you know me, I am an honourable man. I can't tell you offhand, but I am above the board. 
Yes, I said. That's all very well. But here I've got a stolen note, and you've got the value for it. Now, I'll tell you, I said, what I'm going to do. I'm going straight with this note to Mr Jacob Twiston, who's got this Dancy de Levis case in hand. He's a well-known society lawyer, I said, of great experience. What did he say to that? Then I come with you, and I've got him in the cab outside. I see. Well, Mr Gilman, I'll send down for him. Will you see what this Mr Ricardos has to say? Yes, sir. There's a gentleman waiting outside in a taxi. Ask him to be so good as to step up. Oh, and um, send Mr. Graviter here. Very good, sir. As I told you, sir, I've been following this case. Well, it's what you might call uh, Pekong. And I shall be very glad if this helped Captain Dancy. I take an interest because I don't like Hebrews. Mm, a uh, thorn in the flesh, Mr. Gilman. <laughs> well, it's not that I've anything against them, but... The fact is, I prefer my own countryman, and that's the truth of it. You wanted me? Yes, Gravita. Look, Mr. Gilman has brought this £50 note for me to see. His customer, who changed it three days ago, is on his way up. A oh, £50-pounder, I see. Uh, Mr. Ricardos. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Jacob Twisden. This is my partner, Mr. Gravita. Uh, good afternoon, gentlemen. Mr. Gilman here has told us about this £50 note. You took it to him, he says... Three days ago and received cash for it. Uh, yes, sir. You were not aware that it was stolen? Oh, no, sir. You received it from... Uh, 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 sir, a, a minute. I would wish to explain uh, in private. Uh. Quite, quite. Uh, Mr. Gilman, your conduct has been most prompt. You may safely leave the matter in our hands now. Kindly let us retain this note. We will get in touch with you later. Well, sir, I must be guided by you with your experience. I'm glad you think I acted right. Very rightly, Mr. Gilman, very rightly. And now, uh, good afternoon. Uh, good afternoon, sir. Uh, good afternoon, gentlemen. I'm sure I'm very happy to have made your acquaintance, sir. It's a well-known name. Thank you. Uh, I suppose there's nothing else I ought to do in the interest of the law. I'm a careful man. If there is, Mr. Gilman, we will let you know we have your address. You may make your mind quite easy, but don't speak of this. It might interfere with justice. Oh, I shouldn't dream of it. I've no wish to be mixed up in anything conspicuous. That's not my principle at all. Good day, gentlemen. Now, sir, you may speak out. Well, gentlemen, this matter is very serious for me and, and very delicate. It concerns my honour... I am in a great difficulty. When in difficulty, complete frankness, sir. It is a family matter, sir. Let I... me be frank with you. We have your admission that you changed this stopped note for value. It will be our duty to inform the Bank of England that it has been traced to you. You will have to account to them for your possession of it. I suggest to you that it will be far better to account frankly to us. I... I received this note, sir, with others from a gentleman in settlement of a debt of honour, and I know nothing of where he got them. Hmm. That is very vague. If that is all you can tell us, I'm afraid... Uh, gentlemen, this is very painful for me. It is my daughter's good name. Oh, come, sir, speak out of it. The notes were a settlement to her from this gentleman of whom she was a great friend. I'm afraid we must press you for the name of the gentleman. Sir, if I give it to you and it does him harm, what will my daughter say? Oh, this is a bad matter for me. He behaved well to her and she's attached to him still. Sometimes she is crying yet because she lost him. And, and, and now we betray him, perhaps. Who knows? Betray? This is very unpleasant for me. In the paper, it gives the number of another note, huh? A hundred pound note. I have that too. May I see it? Me. How much did he give you in all? For my daughter's settlement, one thousand pounds. I understand he did not wish to give a check because of his marriage. Huh? So I, I did not think anything about it being in notes, you see. When did he give you the money? In the middle of October last. Mr. Ricardo's, was it Captain Dancy? Gentlemen, I... I am so fond of my daughter. I, I have only the one and no one. Yes, yes, but we must know. Sir, if I tell you, will you give me your good word that my daughter shall not hear of so it? So far as we are able to prevent it, certainly. Sir, I trust you. 
It was Captain Dancy. Were you blackmailing him? Sure. He's gravity. My partner means, did you um, press him for this settlement? I did think it my duty to, to my daughter to ask that he make compensation to her. With threats that you would tell his wife? Captain Dancy was a man of honor. He said, of course I will do this. I trusted him, and, and a month later I, I did remind him, and, and he gave me this money for her. I, I do not know where he got it. I do not know. Gentlemen, I had invested it all on her. Every penny except this hundred-pound note for which I had the purpose to buy a necklace. Uh, this is the swear truth. What is your address, Mr. Ricardos? The Villa Benvenuto. Uh, take that down, Gravita. Well, Mr. Ricardos, I must keep this note, and you will not speak of it to anyone. I may recognize that you were a holder for value received. Others might take a different view. Good day, sir. Gentlemen, I, I beg you, I remember what I said, huh? My daughter, oh, I'm not happy. Good day. I'm afraid it's true. That man was not acting, Gravita. What's to be done about dancing? Can you understand? A gentleman. I don't know, sir. There's a war loosened form all over the place. I, I saw plenty of that myself. And some men have no moral sense. From the first, I've had my doubts. We can't go on with the case. Oh, it's an awful thing for his wife. Yes. Chance brought these notes here, sir. That man won't talk. He's, he's too scared. Gilman may. They're too respectable. If to leave us got those notes back and the rest of the money anonymously... But the case, Gravito, the case... I don't believe this alters what I've been thinking. Thought is one thing, knowledge another. There's a duty to our profession. Ours is a fine calling. On the good faith of solicitors, a very great deal hangs. Oh, let down see him for prosecution. He came to us in confidence. Not so. as against the law. No, no, I suppose not. I do. I don't like losing this case. I don't like the admission we've backed such a wrong oh, It's impossible to go on. Apart from ourselves, Sir Frederick, we must disclose to him. We can't let him go on in the dark. Complete confidence between solicitor and counsel is the essence of professional honour. What are you going to do then, sir? See Dancy at once. Get him on the phone. Mrs. Dancy. Good afternoon, Mr. Twiston. Mr. Graviter. Good afternoon, Mrs. Dancy. I said I'd come round in case there was anything you wanted to say before tomorrow. Uh, Major Colfred's taken Ronnie off in his car for the night. I thought it would do him good. And where have they gone? I don't know, but he'll be home before ten o'clock tomorrow. Is there anything? Well, I'd like to see him before the court sits. Um, send him on here as soon as he comes. Oh, Mr. Twiston, when will it be over? My head's getting awful sitting in that court. Oh, my dear Mrs. Dancy, there's no need at all for you to come down tomorrow. Really and truly? Yes, stay away. It's the very best thing you can do. How do you think it's going? It went very well today. Very well indeed. You must be awfully fed up with us. Oh, my dear young lady, that's our business. <laughs> oh, there, there. Uh, you want a day off badly. I'm so tired of... Thank you so much for all you're doing. Goodbye. Goodbye, Mr. Rabbit. Goodbye, Mrs. Dancy. Do you know, I, I believe she knows. No. No, no, she believes in him implicitly. Poor thing. Hasn't that saved me, sir? It has me. No. No, I can't go on with the case. It's breaking faith. Get Sir Frederick's chambers and ask him if I can come round and see him at once. Good morning, Mr. Darcy, sir. Good morning. Mr. Twiston wanted to see me before the court sat. Uh, yes, sir. If you'll wait here one moment, sir. Oh, very well. Were you in the war? Yes. How can you stick life in a lawyer's office? My trouble was to stick the war, sir. But you get no excitement from year's end to year's end. To drive me mad. Oh, a case like this is pretty exciting. I'd give a lot to see us win it. Why? What does it matter to you? I don't know, sir. Well, it's... Like football. You want your side to win. Uh, good morning, Captain Dancy. Good morning, Mr. Tristan. Come in. I'm sorry to have kept you waiting. Windsor came to me yesterday about General Canning's evidence. Is that what you wanted to speak to me about? No. 
No, it isn't that. I... I don't want you to go to the court this morning. Not. I have very serious news for you. Oh? Uh -huh. You see these two notes? After the court rose yesterday, we had a man called Ricardos here. Is there any need for me to say more? No. Well, what now? Our duty was plain. We could not go on with the case. I have consulted Sir Frederick. He felt that he must throw up his brief, and he will do that the moment the court sits. Now, I want to talk to you about what you're going to do. That's very good of you, considering. I don't pretend to understand. But I imagine you may have done this in a moment of reckless bravado, feeling perhaps that as you gave the mayor to deliver us, the money was by rights as much yours as his. To satisfy a debt of honor to this lady, and, no doubt, to save your wife from hearing of it from the man Ricardos. Is that so? To the life. It was mad, Captain Dancy, mad. But the question now is, what do you owe to your wife? Well, she doesn't dream, I suppose. No. We can't tell what the result of this collapse will be. The police have the theft in hand. They may issue a warrant. Well, the money could be refunded and the costs paid. Somehow that can all be managed, but it may not help. In any case, what end is served by your staying in the country? You can't save your honor, that's gone. You can't save your wife's peace of mind. If she sticks to you, do you think she will? Not if she's wise. Far better leave the country. I will break it to your wife. I don't know what to do. Well, you must decide quickly. The... Our alternatives. Go straight away. You have a passport, I suppose. Have you got money on you? Yes. We will see what we can do to stop or delay proceedings. It's awful damn kind of you, but I must think of my wife. Give me a few minutes. Yes, yes, yes. Go next door and think it out. Yes, sir? Tell them to call a taxi. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Gravett has just come in, sir, with General Canning. Uh, here they are, sir. Oh, yes. Good morning, General. Uh, good morning. Well, Gravett, huh? Well, Sir Frederick got up at once and said that since the publication of the numbers of those notes, information had reached him which had forced him to withdraw from the case. Great sensation, of course. I left Bromley in charge. There'll be a formal verdict for the defendant with costs. Have you told Answer? Yes. He's in the next room deciding what he'll do. This is a dreadful thing, Twiston. I've been afraid of it all along. A soldier, a gallant fellow, too. What on earth got into him? There's no end to human nature, General. You can see queerer things in the papers any day. That poor young wife of his. Windsor gave me a message for you, Twiston. If money's wanted quickly to save proceedings, draw on him. Is there anything I can do? I've advised him to go abroad at once. <laughs> I don't know that an asylum isn't the place for him. He must be off his head at moments. That jump. Crazy. He'd have got a verdict on that alone, if they'd seen those balconies. I was looking at them when I was down at Meldon last Sunday. Daring thing, Twiston. Very few men on a dark night. Oh, he risked his life twice. That's a shrewd fellow, young Delevis. He spotted Dance's nature. Will you see Major Colford and Miss Orme, sir? I show them in. Colford's badly cut up. There must be some mistake about this, Mr. Twiston. A little quieter, please, Major Colford. Dance his next door. He's admitted it. Morning, Margaret. Good morning, Mr. Jacob. If it were my own brother, I couldn't feel it more. But, damn it, what right had Sir Frederick to chuck up the case? Without letting Dancy know, too. I came down with Dancy this morning and he knew nothing about that it. That was unfortunately unavoidable. Guilty or not, you ought to have stuck to him. It's not playing the game, Mr. Twist. You must allow me to judge where my duty lay in a very hard case. I thought a man was safe with his solicitor. Colford, you don't understand professional etiquette. No, thank heaven. When you have been as long in your profession as I have been in mine, Major Colford, you will know that duty to your calling outweighs duty to friend or client. But I serve the country. And I serve the law, sir. Grab it, give me a sheet of paper. I'll write a letter for him. Dear Mr. Jacob, can't we pay to leave us? You're very welcome to my pearls. Don't let Money Ronnie... isn't the point, Margaret. It's ghastly. It really is. I'm going in to shake hands. No, you? Major Colford, wait. We want him to go straight off abroad. Don't upset him. 
I think that you and Miss Orme had better go. If a little later, Margaret, you could go round to Mrs. Dancy. Yes, poor little Mabel. That's perfect hell for her. You're quite right, Colford. It is. Oh, oh boy. It's no good, Colford. Ah, oh, clear out, all of you. I can't stand commiseration. Let me have some air. Uh, Margaret, uh, Major Colford, uh, Gravita, would you please? Of course. Uh, Come on, Margaret. Well, I'm going home to clear things up with my wife. General Canning, I... I don't quite know why I did the rotten thing, but I did. And there's an end of it. Dancy, for God's sake, avoid further scandal if you can. I've written a letter to a friend of mine in France. It will help you get a job. Very good of you. I don't know if I can make use of it. What is it, Gravita? De Levis is here, sir. De Levis? I can't see him. Let him in. Oh, very well, Gravita. I'm afraid you'll achieve nothing by seeing him, Dancy. Things have gone too far. I want the swine to know that I'm still not afraid of him. Mr. Twisden, I came to say that... Oh. You here, Dancy? I, I didn't know. You wanted to see me? Yes, I overheard that... I'm afraid a warrant is to be issued. I wanted you to realise it's not my doing. I'll give it no support. I'm content. I don't want my money. I don't even want the costs. Dancy, do you understand? We are obliged to you, sir. It was good of you to oh, come. Don't mistake me. I didn't come because I feel Christian. I am a Jew. I will take no money, not even that which was stolen. Give it to charity. I am proved right. And, and... And now I'm done with the damn thing. Good morning. You heard what he said, Dancy? You've no time to lose. Captain Dancy. I heard. No time to lose. Ronnie. Hello, Mabel. Uh, do they want me in court? No. What is it, then? Why are you back? Spun. Spun? What do you mean, what's spun? The case. They found out through those notes. Who? Me. Don't run it. Oh, no, don't. Pity you wouldn't come to Africa three months ago. Why didn't you tell me then? I would have gone. You wanted this case. Huh? Well, it's fallen down. Oh, why didn't I face it? But I couldn't. I had to believe. And now you can't. It's the end, Mabel. No. Forgive me. Oh, Tony. Please forgive me. Yes. Oh, yes. I think I've known a long time, really. Only, what made you? Oh, it was a crazy thing to do, but... Damn it, I was only looting a looter. The money was as much mine as his, and... A decent chap would have offered me half. I... You didn't see the brute look at me at dinner that night. As much as to say, you blasted fool, it may be mad. That wasn't a bad jump twice over. <laughs> Nothing in the war took quite so much nerve. I rather enjoyed that evening. But money, Ronnie, to keep it. Yes, but... I had a debt to pay. To a woman? A debt of honour. It wouldn't wait. It was to a woman. Ronnie, don't lie anymore. Well, I wanted to save your knowing. I promised a thousand. I had a letter from her father that morning threatening to tell you. All the same, if the tyke hadn't jeered at me for parlour trick, oh, what's the good of all this now? But... Well, it may cure you of loving me. Get over that, Mab. I never was worth it. And I'm done for. The woman. Have you since... No. But if you'd known I was leaving a woman for you, you'd never have married me. What has happened, exactly? Oh, Sir Frederick's chucked up the case. I've seen Twiston. They want me to get out of the country. Why? There's to be a warrant. A prosecution? A prison? Oh, you must go. Oh, don't wait a minute. Go. No. Oh, Ronnie, no, please, please, take what you'll want and I'll pack. No, no, don't wait to take things. Have you got money? Enough. This will be 
Goodbye, then. No. No, no, I'll follow. I'll come out to you. Do you mean you'll stick to me? Of course I'll stick to you. Oh, Max. Oh, Ronnie. Dearest Ronnie. Who can that be? We'll soon find out. No, no, don't let them see you. I'll look through the letterbox. I can't bear it. No. Head up, Mabs. Put on a good show. Whatever happens, I'll go on loving you. If it's prison, I'll wait. Do you understand? I don't care what you did. I don't care. I'm just the same. I'll be just the same when you come back to me. Oh, that's not in human nature. It is. It's in me. I crocked up your life. No. No. Oh, kiss me. break the door in. It's no good. We must open. Oh, now, hold them in check a little. I want a minute or two. Ronnie. Ronnie, it won't be for long. I'll be waiting. I swear oh, it. You must have gone, Miss Teddy. There. Now, wait till I'm in the bedroom and, and let them in. And, ma'am, head up. Remember. Head up. I should think you must be sure whether your husband is in or not, madam. This is not a big flat. Well, he was changing his clothes to go out. I think he's gone. Where does that door lead to? Our bedroom. Well, he'll be in there, then. What do you want, Inspector? Well, madam, it's, it's no use disguising it. I'm exceedingly sorry, but I have a warrant for his arrest. Inspector. I'm sure I have every sympathy for you, madam. But I must carry out my instructions. And break my heart. Well, madam, the law's the law. Inspector, could you give us half an hour? It's two lives, two whole lives. We've only been married four months. Come back in half an hour. Oh, it's such a little thing. Nobody will know nobody. Won't you? No, madam, you must know my duty. Stand back, please. Oh, Inspector, I beseech you. Just half an hour. The door's locked. Is there another door to that room? Come now. Inspector's just given me this note, Margaret. Listen, dear Colford, this is the only decent thing I can do. It's too damned unfair to Mabel. A pistol keeps faith. Look after her, Colford. My love to her and you. Ronnie. <gasps> A pistol keeps faith. Keeps faith? We've all done that. It's not enough. All right, old boy. I'll look after her. In Loyalties by John Galsworthy, Captain Dancy was played by Keith Michel and Ferdinand de Levis by John Justin. The rest of the cast was Charles Windsor, Rolf Lefever, Lady Adela Windsor, Diana Olson, Treasure, Wilfred Babbage, General Canning, Robert Sampson, Margaret Orme, Margaret Ward, Mabel Dancy, Hilda Schroeder, Inspector Deed, Stephen Thorne, Robert, Gordon Gardner, Major Colford, Alexander John, Augustus Boring, Frederick Treves, Lord St. Earth, Geoffrey Winkert, Edward Graviter, Frank Henderson, Clark, Gordon Gardner, Gilman, Ronald Herdman, Jacob Twisden, Harrison Kauf, Ricardos, Harold Casket. The play was produced by Betty Davis.
John Goldsworthy's loyalties was adapted for radio by Peggy Wells.